you can reduce the impact that the vulnerability is causing. Then one of the challenges that we have is that today the companies have a range of applications and systems or even services that we are using and we need to pay close attention to what may be happening in terms of security. So you're going to say, well, how do I learn about uh, the vulnerabilities that have been discovered, what's going on? And actually, there, are, there is, there's a range of options. One of them, for instance, is subscribing to the channels of each of the vendors or the newsletters to receive advice about the new vulnerabilities discovered. Not only can we subscribe to a single vendor, but you may be subscribed to several. On the other hand, these advisors, um, uh, these uh, newsletters or notes uh, that uh, the uh, vendors are sending, they're going to send about all the software that they have. And we may or may not have the services that they are discussing. So we can be in touch to see what, uh, which of our machines may be affected or what are the services that may be impaired so as to do something about it. Now, for remediation techniques, we need to know the size of the problem, how big of a problem is it. And each of these announcements that uh, the vendors are going to send us will have a different severity on. And uh, this will help us contain uh, and uh, know what we are dealing with, what we are facing which of our machines would be affected or what services uh, would have problems. So once we know which of those uh, services or machines are being affected at present uh, of, of uh, the ones that we offer or that we have at the company, then we need to know whether there are any patches available that could be applied. As I said earlier, this is not always the case. It's not it's not always there is a patch. So we need to find a way to mitigate. And it is here that we have to consider the tools for managing uh, vulnerabilities, the ones that are available in the market. So if we have uh, to subscribe to each of the channels and know the infrastructure that we have and which of the softwares that we are using today and so on, the truth is that we would need a lot of staff and all of them focusing on knowing our vulnerabilities. And with the tools of a, for handling uh, the vulnerabilities, the good thing is that we're going to centralize all the information because this is already uh, happening in a more automated manner. So you you need to know what's a vulnerability that's being exploited and uh, what machines are being affected. We're going to be able to see that. And for instance, we, we may have some of these um, uh, tools that uh, we evaluated at Juno and uh, at Edge Uno, and uh, typically the tools that we evaluated, most of them were commercial and were cloud-based, where we had uh, to install um, a team that um, we that it has to be installed, and uh, we are going to send. Uh, uh, they're going to send information to a cloud of a vendor or somebody we didn't know and what we wanted to have under control the type of information that would be sent. So what we were looking for is a solution with premise to, to, to have all the control and to avoid any leaks of data. So the tools available at present uh, commercially offer us several functionalities including managing vulnerabilities throughout the cycle and uh, patch management tools and other functionalities that come hand in hand with security. And usually, well, the 
the cost of these tools was uh, 100 to 200 dollars a year per device and in practice if we have a relatively small company this uh, spending would not be too significant but in a larger company well then the costs would really soar so when we are speaking of costs, sometimes the, these decisions are made uh, using the parameters to know whether it uh, makes sense or not imagine that you have one million uh, machines uh, to solve imagine the cost all right so evaluating other possibilities in the market other options we saw that there were two that were open source and we've worked with them for some time one was vols io and to tell the truth to tell the truth after using this tool our experience was that we found it first of all quite limited that is as you can see there on the slide it was impossible to no, you couldn't see the events very well and uh, you didn't have permits uh, to assign users you couldn't create any users so you could it was limited to identifying and uh, 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 the vulnerabilities so this was not actually a solution and uh, we were uh, and and it, it wouldn't cover us in uh, uh, places that we had to be covered so in a nutshell it can only identify and assess what is happening in the infrastructure of the company and how it affected us but you couldn't apply any patches it didn't do any benchmarks or auditing nor could you monitor anything because it's a system of uh, security events so later on another tool that we analyzed was was and actually this is quite a comprehensive suite because not only um uh, we, we can for instance centralize the logs we can create alerts for events or even incidents that we consider that is very useful every day but it also enables us to handle vulnerabilities where we do everything except remediation that is identifies vulnerabilities tells us uh, what are the machines that are affected what are the applications that the apps that are being explo exploited and they show the um um all this uh, so this is quite a comprehensive suite not only are we going to have two possibilities uh, for showing the information here you see this is presented as a dashboard it's more user friendly for reading so that was one of the best options that we found and on the other hand we have the possibility to see this information uh, for each of the events in a more detailed manner if you wish for instance to visit to see some events to see the details or even to know what happened in depth uh, in the long run this is much more useful and uh, another uh, functionality of this suite is the possibility of uh, um, doing analyzing the machines that we have at our company with the best practices uh, in the, available in the market that is the benchmark of security that end up being used in the standards the truth is that in, in this they, they give us a lot of alerts and they can indicate us whether it's necessary to use a, a, a configuration that may be the best uh, for to defend our machines or maybe to adopt uh, some other best practices and although it was not uh, too necessary in the long run it's very interesting and desirable because what we need the most is to be covered uh, facing any phase of security one of the functionalities that Wazoo has is the possibility of using security event management and the facility this provides is to have all the 
blocks in a more centralized way. We can also identify which are the events that we should pay attention to. And in the same way, in the previous presentation, they had there were two ways of visualizing the information. One was through graphs or dashboards, and the other one was in detail through text. And the reality is that if we did not have this centralization, then we would have to look at each machine one by one and each alert to see what would be happening. And the truth is that, of course, this would require a lot of personnel to cover all the machines or events that would be occurring in our organization. So this makes life easier in our daily work because it not only has the alerts that to tell us what is happening, but we also count on several with several filters. We have several filters. And this ends up being very, very useful, as I mentioned earlier. Here, for example, you see the number of events that occurred over a given period of time. This helps us to determine where we stand in terms of security regarding the events that are taking place. And having seen this overview regarding the big risk and what we saw that what we needed was to have this information in a more central, centralized way in order to have details on the events that are taking place. When we saw that we were monitoring these devices, the reality is that we had many, many events. You cannot visualize these, there are about 1.5 million events. And in order to process each of these events, we wouldn't have enough time every day. So when we are on the security side, we have to act as fast as possible in order to avoid possible failures in some of the machines that might be compromised. The reality is, as I mentioned at the beginning, that the number of filters you have are very powerful. In this case, we're going to apply filters on the criticality of each of these vulnerabilities. And these can be numbered in a large number of fields. You can do filtering, for example, based on a given criterion or an OS that you have in the company or event by event or type of machine. So these are some of the fields provided by the tool. These are not all, there are many, many more. But with this, what we can do is to reduce the large amount of events and focus on those that really require our attention. And we can see that if we apply the corresponding filter from 1.5 million events that we had, we now have about 70,000 hits. And this is much more manageable in a security environment and is most helpful in order to process all these events. And if required, if we wish to further refine the search of the events, we can continue applying other filters in order to have to improve the process for analyzing the notifications. Just to give you some of the additional rules that this tool has, we see that you can apply this on agent, according to agent name, you can filter uh, for an event that might be taking place here. We see that if we eliminate the filter or the notification of a SSHTD attack, this reduction would be significant in the number of events. And this is very useful. And in the WASU suite, you can also do agent management. This is a client that has to be installed in each of the machines that we are going to need to monitor. And this is what we're going to have to base the equipments on in order to provide the information. The reality is 
that this not only is useful to send the information, but it also provides other additional functionalities. For example, you see what the operational systems are being used, which was the latest connectivity. If you click on an agent specifically, you can visualize what applications are installed in a given machine. And this is very, very useful because let us assume that in a real case scenario, a vulnerability was reported on a, on a type of software and we can go and check if in fact that equipment has that vulnerable version. So this really simplifies our day-to-day -day work. At the same time, this provides the opportunity of producing reports in case you need to produce reports for management. This is always very useful. Then we have something that goes hand in hand with the filters. This is a possibility of creating groups. This is very useful because when you want to know what events or what types of notifications you are receiving, you can indicate which are the groups that you wish to view. For example, I want to see what is happening at server level throughout the company, what is happening there. And re this is very, very useful. And then if you need to apply a certain type of configuration or some other type of additional filter, we can state that this should only be applied to a certain group. For example, let us apply a configuration to the workstation. So to conclude, we see that, as I mentioned when we started, that vulnerability management involves all those steps that we will have to follow in order to then decide what actions to take based on a given vulnerability. Let us recall that the stages or steps were notification, classification, and then prioritization, and then remediation, and finally mitigation. One of the challenges that we face on a daily basis is to be always updated regarding the latest vulnerabilities that arise every day and how this might affect us. And then we also informed about the commercially available solutions and also open source solutions. Let us remember that what the commercial solutions provided were mostly cloud-based. So as an organization, what we did not wish to do is to send information outwards. That is why we decided to opt for this op WASOP. And ultimately, one say, well, what is the best option? Well, the best option is determined by each company and by the needs an organization might have. And in our specific case, we decided to opt for WASOP because this offered functionalities for identification, prioritization, classification. And the only thing that this did not do was remediation. But for that purpose, this was not relevant for us because we already have a platform that applies these remediations and the patches. So that would be all, and I'm happy to take any questions, if any, or something that was not clear. Yes, Sergio. There are, there's a question. Hugo Salgado says, thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. Regarding Wazoo, the installation on premise, how many resources does this require in terms of hardware and configuration time? The reality is that in terms of hardware and software, this is quite a user-friendly application. It doesn't require too many resources. 
I don't exactly recall how much it consumed, but this was not, this, the, there were not so many resources consumed. Well, you can not only set the resources, but the WASU application can be scalable. So if in the future you need to add additional resources so that it works more rapidly because even your organization is also growing, that can be done without any inconveniences. Any further questions? Uh, did I answer your question? Yes, very clear. We have no further questions. We can wait um, a while to see if more questions come up. Otherwise, thank you very much for your presentation.